Okay, let's talk about slabs in ARCHICAD, the slab tool is found in the design section of the toolbox. Here you can see we have the slab icon and if we double click that, that brings up our slab default settings. and in our info box up here we additionally have settings for the slab now a slab is not necessarily a slab a slab can be any horizontal surface flat horizontal surface it can be a slab it can be a countertop it can be shelves it can be anything that's a flat plain surface. By giving the slab a different fill or different composite structure, it can be used to create any of the horizontal elements. Okay, so with the slab tool, if we click up here, on the slab icon. That brings up the slab default settings which is the same thing in here but it's presented in a, a bit of a clearer format. Up here we have our favorites and if we've set up a favorite slab it'll show up here by clicking on the favorites In this box here we have the slab thickness. We're going to enter four, four inches. Uh, this box here gives us the height to the current story. Unlike the walls with the slab tool, the four inches we put up here will actually turn as a negative four inches from project zero. Uh, at the moment we have the slave defaults settings menu expanded but if we click on these little arrows here we can close this up subsequently we can open whatever menu we want to work on. In the floor plan and section menu, this first line show on stories gives us the option to show the slab on the home story the home in one story up, the home in one story down, home in one story up and down, and all stories. And uh, also a custom button, which will bring up a separate menu, in which we can put additional parameters for how we want the slab shown on different stories. The cut fill can be selected. Right now we have uh, an empty fill for the cut fill, but we can bring up our menu of fill patterns and say this one here, concrete lightweight, and that'll give us the fill that we see when we cut through a section. We also have cut fill pen, cut fill bracket, background pen, cut lines, cut line pen, our outlines, and 
cover fills. If we select this box here, cover fills, that gives us additional options. We can use the fill of the surface material. If we turn that off, we have the option to pick a cover fill up here. Say in this case we pick a uh, 24 inch grid to represent tile. We can also put in a colored background pen. Let's say yellow. And here we can pick the uh, orientation of the fill. Okay. Let's select OK. There are several different ways of placing the, uh, the slab. Uh, we have a polygon tool. So we can click on our floor plan. Draw lines in any shape. And that will give us a fill that way. Control Z out of that. Rectangle tool. Control Z out of that. Or a rotated rectangle where we'll start by placing a line giving us the direction or the angle of the slab that we want to place. And by bringing our cursor out horizontally place a slab that way. Control Z out of that. Lay out this uh, building plan with the exterior walls from a previous lesson. Another way we can place a slab is to hold down the space bar, in which case we'll get the magic wand. If I hold that to the outside of the structure and click, that also give us a slab for the entire structure. I'll right click on the mouse and show all in 3D. Now you can see that we have our building slab placed in the proper place under the walls for the structure. Go back to our first floor plan. If we draw a section line through the slab, we open that section. Again, you can see how the slab comes in right under the walls. Below our project zero. All right, another way that we can place a slab, and if we select this slab and delete it, go back to the slab tool. If we hold the space bar down, place the magic wand in the center we'll have the slab that will go to the inner edge of the walls and we can see that by
placing a section line across here. Left click on that, right click, and click on open a section. and we'll zoom in and now you can see that the slab has come to the inside edge of the walls close that control Z control Z and this time we'll put the slab back on the side edge of the walls. Alright, another thing we'll, that we can do if we want to change say the direction that the floor tile is going we can select the slab, right click, pull up slab selection settings, go into the cover fill orientation and make sure that we have the link to fill origin button selected that will give us a little handle we left click on the handle select this handle on this slab and make sure that the move sub element button is selected on the pet palette and we can put this in any direction say we'll put this at 45 degrees and click and then we have our fill pattern on top of the slab at a 45 degree angle Okay, another uh, thing that we can do with the fill pot pattern on the slab, if we select the slab, go back into slab selection settings, go down to cover fill orientation, and click distorted, and click OK. That gives us kind of a double handle here where as you can see by rotating the handle we've distorted the fill pattern of the slab as shown okay I'll control Z out of that okay once we have our slab uh, let's see what we can do to edit our slab in uh, 3D so we'll select the slab and we'll right click and we'll select show selection marquee in 3D now we're looking at just the selected slab in 3D. If we come down here and deselect the orbit setting, we're back to the arrow tool with the magnet selected. Select the slab and then we right click again for our slab selection settings. And here we have our model view selections. As you can see right here um, for the top of the slab right now we have pine selected and for the edges of the slab we have whitewash and for the bottom of the slab we have whitewash. Now let's say we want to change that. We'll take 
take the slab, top of the slab and let's make that concrete light. And edge of the slab will make concrete light. I will leave the bottom whitewash. Now if we did want to make both the top, the bottom, and the edge all the same color with one click, we could link the materials and they'd all become concrete light, but let's unclick that for now and we'll click OK. Click on Orbit and now you can see we have a concrete colored slab. Okay, we'll go back to the floor plan here. After the selecting a slab, another way that we can uh, draw the slab uh, say with the rectangular button selected and we just start anywhere and say we put in uh, 20 feet for the uh, dimension 1 and highlight dimension 2 and put in 20 feet and click enter. We'll have a rectangular slab that's 20 by 20. Control Z. Okay, let's look at some options for drawing slabs with the polygonal geometry. If I select that and say we start a slab down here, we get a pet palette that comes up. Now if I hold my shift key down and head up in a straight direction, give ourselves a distance of 20. You can see we have several selections here. We can also put in an arc tangential to a previous segment, uh, an arc with a defined tangent, an arc by three points, and an arc by center point. Let's use this arc with defined tangent. go back to a straight segment let's do an arc by three points here's our first point we'll put another point out here uh, another point here and as you can see we can rotate that arc as far as we like Go back to the straight segment, place another line, and let's place another line here. And now we can do an arc by center point. can go back to our straight segment close the polygon we'll select that slab and show selection marquee in 3D and there's that slab in 3D
go back to the floor plan. And delete that slab. Okay, let's look at some other ways that we can edit a slab. Let's go to our arrow tool. We'll select this wall here. Uh, say we decide to put a curve in this wall. We can grab that wall. Our pet palette comes up and we'll select curve edge. And we'll bring that wall out to here. Now that leaves us missing part of the slab where this wall came out here. So we can do basically the same thing. We'll click on the edge of that slab. We'll have a curve edge and we can bring that out to the edge of the wall and that will fill in the rest of our slab. Okay, what else can we do with our slab selected? You'll notice that if we click on a node here, it'll bring up our pet palette, which gives us several options. The first one is to move a node, so if we were to take this node and place it out here, it would extend the slab in that way. Control Z. If we select fill it and let's give ourselves a radius to say six feet and click OK you can see now we've put a curve on the slab it's with a six foot radius select undo we can also offset all edges I select this button here we can bring our slab out by any defined distance which we can put in our tracker uh, we can reduce it and let's reduce it say two foot and you can see the effect that the offset has undo We can also add to the polygon, subtract to the polygon. We can drag it, we can rotate it, we can mirror it, we can elevate the slab, and we can multiply. Let's take a look at adding to the polygon. With that selected, we can click on a node here click on it again let's do this with the rectangle tool as so and now we've added a slab to this existing slab undo. We can also subtract. And now we've subtracted the slab. Undo. Another way we can work with the slab is with the slab selected, we can 
select uh, say the uh, rectangular method and click on the slab and draw our slab and that will cut a hole in the slab undo with the polygon tool selected we can do an irregular shaped hole we can make it in the shape of a circle and so with a combination of those tools we can put any kind of hole or opening in the slab control Z control Z okay another way to cut a uh, hole with a perfect cir circle in the slab we select our uh, circle tool uh, put a s circle in the slab then we select our slab again With the slab tool selected, we press our spacebar down, which gives us a magic wand, which we place on top of the circle, and left click. That gives us a perfect circle cut out of the slab. Okay, another thing that uh, we can do with the slab and this will be easier to show if I if I deselect the the walls I'll do that by clicking on the wall icon and pressing control A that will select the walls I'm gonna go up here to um, my quick layers palette which can be opened by clicking on the window here palettes and go down to quick layers this is excellent for turning layers on and off switching back and forth toggling between layers I'll turn the walls off and pick up my arrow tool again select the slab and you'll notice if I click on a corner icon there I can select this button here fill it which will give, give us a fillet and chamfer I can type in the radius of the fillet that I want. I can put it on that corner, just the corner that I selected. Or I can apply to all corners. I click OK. And as you can see, we've put a six foot radius on all corners. Control Z. Now we can do the same thing with a chamfer. Apply that to all corners and click OK. Control Z. Okay, now we'll uh, continue on with some different ways to manipulate the slab. With the slab selected, if I put the cursor on a node, we get our check mark and we click 
as you can see it remembered our last command but we can cancel out of that and go back to our pet palette and we have some other options here drag we can drag our slab into any position we can rotate in order to rotate the slab we'll click on a left click on a node uh, that'll give us a little line to make this more precise we'll click on another node and at that point we can rotate that slab in any direction if we like we can type in say 33 degrees on the angle and press enter I'll undo that again offsetting all edges by an equal amount we'll undo that we can mirror and if we hold down the control key that'll actually mirror a copy of the slab as you'll see under the pencil we got a little plus mark as we push the control key on and off if we leave that plus mark on there and then click we will have mirrored an exact copy of that slab uh, control Z we can elevate the slab we have it at zero now we can say put in one foot click OK and that'll elevate the slab one foot and we can also multiply the slab so say we want three copies of a particular slab and we want to distribute them click OK we'll zoom out and we can grab a point on that slab left click and now we've got multiple copies of the same slab control Z control Z fit into the window and we'll deselect well, as you can see with our uh, quick layer palette this little icon here with the eyeball is the show hide toggle if I click on that we'll go back and forth between the layers that are shown currently and the hidden layer we can lock and unlock if I select th this layer we can hide that selection and we'll hide that also and then we can toggle back and we'll see everything we can select the layer and we can hide all the other layers
that's a quick overview of the quick layers palette.